What's up guys, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. We're doing ophthalmology style suturing. I have my Westcott scissors, I have my needle drivers, in this case locking. We have a curved version, and of course they come in a straight version, Castro Viejo uh, locking needle driver here. Then I have a Bishop Harmon 4 set, which we'll need. And then lastly, we're gonna be working with 4-0 silk suture on a reverse cutting P3 needle. Before we get into the suture techniques, uh, which we're gonna learn are going to be simple interrupted suturing. Uh, running suturing, um, we're going to be talking about a vertical mattress, horizontal mattress, and I'll show you a uh, slip knot as well. Um, first, let's talk about how to load the needle. So, I'm going to take it out of the package here. So, this is something that I think gives residents trouble in the beginning. So, first thing that I'll normally do, and I still do this, is I grab it in my dominant hand, grab my non-dominant hand, slide it through my fingers. I now have control of the needle. I can spin the needle. Remember our mnemonic, funny ducks by underwear, FDBU. So, FD, forehand down. So if I want a forehand, I face the needle down. If I want a backhand, I face the needle up toward me. The curve of this needle driver, notice it has a curve to it, always faces toward me. So if we're gonna forehand, I'm facing down with the needle. I grab at 75% of the way back. Now I'm ready for a forehand pass, which is of course going to look like that, forehand. If I want a backhand, I do the same thing, I grab my dominant hand slide through my non-dominant hand. I have control of the needle without actually grabbing the needle. So if I want a backhand, uh, funny ducks by underwear, BU. So backhand up, face the needle up. I then load it in the same way. I'm ready to backhand it. Backhand meaning pass it this way, back of my hand this way, backhand. So let's get into the suture technique. So I'm gonna start by loading it for forehand. Let's move those Westcott scissors out of the way. Let's, let's do a uh, simple interrupted suture here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the skin edge like so. I'm gonna pass from one side. I don't have to unload the needle. I can pass through to the other side, trying to match the height uh, and the depth in my incision. Like so, let's pull the needle through. And we're gonna tie uh, with a 211 knot. So using a surgeon's knot, 211, we pull this through till there's just a small tail left, about like that, just enough for us to tie to. Uh, so I'm one, what I'm going to do now is grab this in my non-dominant hand here, my left hand. Now I take my right hand with the needle drivers, put it inside the loop. I do a one, two wrap. We're doing a two, one, one knot. I grab the tail. I cross to lay it down flat. For my second one, I come from within the loop, do a one. Remember, two, one, one. So this is the two. We did the two. Now we're doing the one. Cross again. And then for the last one, I come from within the loop one more time. Again, crossing so that it lays down as a square knot like so. And then I'm simply going to cut the tails of my sutures just like this, just leaving a little bit, just like that. So now we have a simple interrupted suture and I can continue to do that throughout the wound if I want. Let's move on to running suture. So again, I'm getting ready to load the needle. I grab it like so, pull it through my fingers. I have good control of it. I want a forehand, so I'm gonna face it down. Funny ducks, FD, just like so. All right, so we start the same way. So we're starting at the end of our wound right now. And typically with, an inner, or with a running suture, I like to suture toward myself. It's easier to suture toward yourself. We're going to do the same thing when we tie the suture off to begin with. So I leave that small tail. Let's move this out of the way. And I will show you how to one hand, or how to one hand tie at the end. So let's do that 2-1-1 one, one here. A little tricky because I'm trying to suture around the camera. There's our two, we come from within the loop. One, and then our last one right here. We could throw an extra one if we wanted to make it extra secure. But in this case, we're just doing our surgeons, not two, one, one. We're gonna trim the tail of just one side this time. And now I'm ready to actually run the suture. And when we say run the suture, we mean we're going to do a continuous running pass. So I did the same thing here. Remember, funny ducks by underwear, FD, forehand down, needles down, curve the needle driver toward me. So let's run this suture. I want to match the height and depth in the wound of this pass. I can do that all in one pass. I don't need to, uh, I don't need to take it out as it's uh, only gone through one side of the wound. I can do it all in one. And sometimes I'll just load the needle right there on the skin like that. Uh, and let's just continue running it. So with the running, we just keep going like so. If I want to grab it, sometimes I'll grab it with my forceps like this, hand it to myself. That one cheese wired just a bit through this material. 
but you get the general idea. So what we mean by a running suture is just a suture that's continuous. You notice how I'm not cutting like I was on the simple interrupted. And now let's say I've gotten to the end. I'm ready to tie. This is the end of our, our wound here, like so. So what I'm going to do here, maybe I'll just leave a little loop like so. And with that little loop, I'll do like we did earlier, my 211 surgeon's knot. And I'll just use that loop to tie to, like so. And I can tie to the loop. Just like so, a 211 knot. And now we've done our running suture. Perfect. Now, what I want to show you is how to do a vertical mattress suture. A vertical mattress suture is great for getting good eversion of a wound, and that's just really the way that it's designed. So, um, you can do it a couple different ways. So what it is, is it's a all in one, one plane here. Um, so it's a far, far, near, near, or near, near, far, far. Um, but it's all in one kind of, kind of axis here. So let me show you what a uh, vertical mattress, kind of the idea of it here. So I'm gonna start far and go deep in the wound. And I'm gonna go deep in the wound on the other side and come out far. So right there, there's our needle. So it's kind of like we did our, our, or our interrupted suture earlier, but the difference here, and what I'm gonna actually do is load it again for forehand, like so. So we did far, far. Now we're gonna do near, near. So we're actually gonna come back in on this side that we came out on. We're gonna be near, and we come out more shallow. We go back in more shallow on the other side, and then again, come out near on this side. So, what that leaves us with is something like this. So we went in far, came out deep, went in deep on the other side, came out far, looped back, went near, came out shallow, went in shallow on this side, and now we came out with the near pass. And so what we can do then is take this, we'll do our surgeon's knot, we'll do our two, our one, and our one and what this does is it creates eversion of the wound you can see the wound start to pucker a little bit it's not doing too much because i didn't place them too far apart but that's how you would do a vertical mattress everything is in this line now let's take a quick look at a horizontal mattress pass so i load here for forehand funny ducks we're going to do our horizontal mattress pass and i'm going to use a new cut here because we've run out of room just about. What we're going to do with our horizontal mattress pass is we're going to go like so. I'm going to go in just like we were doing with our simple interrupted or all our other sutures. We're starting the same here. But what I'm going to do a little bit differently is I'm actually going to move in this direction along the wound. And instead of passing in the same axis of that initial pass, we're going to move along just a bit. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go in here. I'm moving along the wound here. And I'm going to come out the other side over next to that little tail that we left, just like so. And now I'm going to tie to our tail with our surgeon's knot too, like so. I'm going to switch needle drivers because these grip better. They're better needle drivers. Like so. You can see that wound wants to pucker a little bit. That's called eversion. Why do we want eversion? Because as the wound heals and contracts, it lays down. So everted when it heals, it'll tend to flatten out over time. If it's flat when you finish, it may uh, have a depression or a scar uh, that's a bit depressed. So there is our horizontal mattress suture. So. With this one, we kind of made a box with our horizontal mattress. Now you can actually do a running horizontal mattress where you could keep it running, um, but that's kind of the basics of the difference between the two. Now I'm gonna show you a slip knot. Uh, I want you guys to, to know how to do this. It's helpful um, for globe suturing. I have a whole video on just slip knots, but uh, I wanna show you how to do it here. So uh, let's go right here. So slip knot, the key with the slip knot Actually, let's do it right here. So the key with the slip knot is this. Let's say we passed it in the normal way. 
The key with this making it a slip knot is that it's adjustable suture. So after the second pass, it's or the second uh, tie, it's adjustable. So I start like normal, but instead of doing a two one one, we're doing a one uh, a one one, and then it becomes adjustable. So from within inside the loop here, so here's the key uh, inside, like so. Grab the tail, cross, lays down like normal. Now instead of coming from within inside, I come from the back side. I do this loop. I come swing around town underneath, grab my tail. I don't cross. I keep that tail on that side like so. Now that is adjustable. So after the second throw, this part can be loosened. See how I loosen it right there? So if I get to the end of the surgery and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just threw all these and it's still too tight or it's too loose, I need to adjust it. Now I can adjust it because it's a slip knot. I can simply retighten it here if I want to just like that. Now say I've gotten it to the right tension and what I would do here typically is I would leave a short tail and a long tail till I'm ready to really cinch it down how I want, come back at the end of the surgery. I know that was my short, that was my long. And then I'll do this final uh, tie which is with inside the loop like normal. Grab the tail, let's pull 90 here just like that. That locks it, now it's locked. So that's how we do a slip knot. I'm gonna cut just like we did earlier. So it's a one 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 Barry's easier if you're doing it uh, within the cornea. Check out the video on just slip knots on the eye that we did. Um, so those are some basics of suturing. Uh, I hope you found that helpful, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.